I've got to tell you a little about Seppo Molelwe because he is a gentleman who loves to stay out of the limelight. You will not see Seppo running off to be featured on the front cover of any of his newspapers, and he owns the uh, biggest newspaper group in the country. You will not see him bragging about the investments that he made in Capitec. As I, I mentioned earlier this morning, the first chunk was at 30 Rand. The second chunk, he doubled up at 300 Rand after it was already a 10-bagger. It's now sitting at uh, 2,200 Rand. The ownership is 7.7%, and it doesn't take much math to work out that that comes to a, a valuation of 18 billion Rand. So it's been an extraordinary journey. But Zeppo grew up in Mamalodi. In Mamalodi, his mother had the foresight to send him to school in Cape Town, well, in the, in the Western Cape, on the, was it on the flats, was it? Uh, Kales River. Kales River, Kales River. So he's got a bit of Cape in him and a bit of uh, a Gauteng in him as well. He then went to university, Rhodes University, was selected to be part of the class of by First Rand, which is quite an extraordinary school. Paul Harris at First Rand at RMB decided that he wanted to put together some, some elite troops, if you like, for the group. And he, had a, he has a class of every year, or certainly did when he was working there. And in the class of year that Seppo was a member, it's a very small little team, other members of the team were Michael Jordan, who's quite well known, and Herman Bosman, who's now the CEO of the company that looks after all the assets of the founders of First Rand. Zeppo then went off to the PIC, where he worked for a period of time. He will tell you privately that the public se sector wasn't really his game. Uh, and he had an idea at that point that Africa needed infrastructure, and he began Harris, which is today one of the major infrastructure investors in Africa. Back then it was the major, the infrastructure investor because not too many people were interested in it. He raised money from the likes of JP Morgan, Citibank, some South African organizations as well to invest in infrastructure projects on the continent. And all, we all know that you can't get an economy going without infrastructure. And infrastructure, we all know, is an incredibly long-term game. It takes a long term. Amongst the, the assets that you probably know is Lanseria Airport, which is part of the Harris Group. And as I mentioned earlier, he was then involved in the early stages of investing in Capitec, and subsequent to that, acquired a, a slice of EOH uh, after the crooks had left. He is uh, recently where, where we uh, got together was he was uh, accused by Bantu Holomisa of doing some uh, things that he didn't do, well, certainly not from what I understand, because I've gone through all the documents and looked at the, at the motivations and the uh, approach was taken was not just naive but almost mischievous on the side of Holomisa, but that's the, court, the, the, the subject of a defamation uh, action, which continues. Uh, I suggested at the time to Tsepo that defamation is not ever a good idea, and he said, no way. Uh-uh, this, this, we've, we've got to attack this. And he has, and he's, he was right. And uh, as I said earlier, he's also my business partner uh, in Biz News. So a shareholder of Biz News, uh, the owner of Arena, which is the owners of the Sunday Times, and uh, Financial Mail, Business Day, newspapers, also in the Eastern Cape, and yet probably uh, not someone that you've heard of yet. Zeppo, I know the, we haven't even touched on it, but South African Airways. Mm. <laughs> uh, those of you who don't know, uh, Zeppo's consortium has just acquired 51% control of South African Airways. And, you know, why bother? <laughs> why bother with all the trouble that you've had to pick up on that? What, what motivated you there? That one gave me a headache. But my wife says I love it. <laughs> I think, you know, uh, 
when you don't have a rich uncle, you try to look for cheap stuff. You try to look for value assets that you can build where there's an opportunity to turn things around. I think when people see SAA, they see a, uh, they see corruption, they see something that's very dysfunctional, and they see all those bad things, and which is true, that's what happened. I think Wayne sort of like told us all those things that happened. And then, uh, but also, that is SAA as a business as it was run then. But if you look at our portfolio, we've had assets you know, within the aviation sector. Uh, besides you know, Lanceria, you know, we've had uh, exposure to assets in North Africa, in, in Tunisia. You know, uh, long ago, I think in the air, like, 29, 2009, 2010, we tried to go into like, no, uh, 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 plane leasing and stuff like that. So, so we've been like looking at this for a while. But the other truth of the matter is that like even before SAA, we actually bid for Kome. So it was not something that we just went for this. It was a well thought through issue. And If you look at like, you know, what happened to airports, what happened to airlines, and what happened to prices, and since we had airports, I, I thought that, like, you no, know, look, it would be a, perhaps, you know, with COVID happening, there might be an opportunity in terms of combining, you know, bombs on seats with flow through of airports. And also, looking at you know what happened to prices of uh, within the sector, it might be the best sort of like time for entry in terms of some of the assets than what one would have uh, has ever had, you know, within our sort of like you know uh, lifetime. So I thought like this is a this is a great opportunity from an entry point of view, and there are numerous opportunities of profitable, successful airlines all over the world and in South Africa. Kome itself for 70 years was profitable. So I felt that if we could like combine that with some of like our aviation assets, I think it would be a great sort of like you know, asset. But then also in addition to that, maybe for you coming, you know, I you know, we are we Pan-African players. And I, I believe that SAA is not just a Cape Town, Johannesburg, Durban sort of like thing. I believe that SAA is much, and the airline business, or that SAA is much more attuned to being a regional sub-Saharan player as opposed to just a South African player. And for the, where the industry is at, it was not gonna, there was an opportunity for a brand like that to be resuscitated to consider that opportunity. And with our ambitions and all our other infrastructure assets that we had, that was the play. And that's, that, that's what drove that. I, I, I really urge you to listen carefully, because I, I, I know Tepo well enough to know that he's talking, it's long-term stuff, and often what we read in the media, this was a government installed initiated, friendly deal. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to go there, but what I am, what I am going to just, just ask you about is, a, is kind of a bigger picture. When, when you got involved with Arena, the newspaper mm -hmm. company, they'd gone through how many years of retrenchments? It, I think it was three or four years. Every year they had retrenchments. Mm -hmm. And when we walked into the building, mm -hmm. I remember on the very first day, Tepo spoke to the assembled staff, maybe eight, nine hundred people. He said, first thing, there will be no more retrenchments. Mm. Why did you do that? I mean, I know why you did that, but perhaps you can explain that point of view. Because here you have a, a contracting industry, you have a new owner, you have a hostile group of people, initially anyway, until they believed you. And then you say to them, right off, no more retrenchments. 
course, COVID happened. You saw what happened with other media companies. Why, Tsepa? What was... What, I know you as, a, as, a, as an authentic entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and yet most entrepreneurs would have gone into a business and the last thing they would say is something of that nature. I think when we got into, into Arena previously, this, what we found out was, that, look, I think first and foremost, the, from a human capital point of view, that was totally neglected. So therefore, the, 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 the people were totally disengaged. But uh, from an industry point of view, people were saying, why are you dying a, buying bu a dying business? But our information tells us that media is not dying, it's just consumed differently. And the consumption of media is actually draw is, is dying. So the way we were going to look at this was that like, if we could sustain the revenue at the current level for at least the next five years, and we structured the business into like from an uh, uh, entry point of view, in terms of let's say like you know, our, the way we structure our money getting in, is that if we can just sustain the revenue for the next five years, whilst we pivot it to a digital sort of like era, you know, we think this is a great platform. But when we also like bought the business, people thought it was just a publications business. You know, within Arena, there's a whole host of other businesses. There's, there's TV, there's events, there's production businesses, there's uh, music, and there's, uh, you know, uh, I mean, Arena also like brings in 40% of the movies that come into the country. You know, it, uh, 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 makes some like local films, like indigenous films and all that. So, uh, so we thought if we can just like uh, sustain that for the next five years, whilst going through this restructuring, we think this is a great business to to be sort of like do that. And then we think that like you no, know, whilst we uh, doing that and win the, you know, win the why 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 what you call the change room, you know, it's a way to sort of like get the energy back in, believe, make the people believe in this. It's a, and uh, it, it's a great business to sort of like do that. But more than anything, it was not for what it stood alone. It's for what we could like make the connections into our, our other platforms and what those sort of like looks like. Because like uh, uh, when we bought Arena, you know, I went to the to the one person who I thought like no knew more that I trusted about media, I, I asked Alec to be our consultant. <laughs> because, you know, uh, when it came to media, the, you know, the one person I thought like that I knew, you know, believed in uh, the issue of like listening to both sides and being fair and about justice. And when I said, when we offered everybody a chance to come and listen to the story, only one person showed up to look at everything, and it was Alec. And since that day, I think that's what sort of like, you know, made me sort of like build up that. And for me, that, that, uh, that, that meant a lot. So we, we felt that like this, we took a long-term view, a five-year view to say to turn around and do all that. And whilst you're doing that, you could not do it around in an environment whereby, you know, there was still negative negativity or people didn't believe in what you were doing and then but then also you had to show a long-term commitment to what you were doing so that it was not like you coming in adopting a same view of saying you know you're gonna strip it further get your cash out or like you know use it as a, like a, a cash cow to do anything or like you know. so and and that's a view i sort of like tend to take and so like because uh, and that medium-term view tends to like make people not think about the next paycheck or the next year, it makes your thinking process much better from even your competitor's point of view. That like, you no, know, whilst they're thinking they're in the dining industry, you're thinking about other connections. So that's the way I want to look at things. Just improve your thought and your planning process around that. It, it, it's sad that when you say that, nobody believes you. But now, yeah. you're looking back on time, yeah. it's, it's, it's quite apparent. But even with yeah. the... With, with the 
airline industry. I think it's, it's the way we're looking at it. We're saying, like, you know, what can this look like about in five years? And I can even assure you to that what we're looking at now, I can definitely assure you like what it will look like in the next three years, it will definitely be a different entity. Yeah, just ignore the noise. No, it's very it's difficult, like but we try to do that. 